Conservation Commission meeting has come to order. It's now 7 o'clock and it's being recorded by RCTV Studios. Uh, you can find it on Verizon 33 and Comcast 22 and it's www.rctv.org. And the first <coughs> item on the agenda is the Notice of Intent 270 0714, 135, 139, 149 R Howard Street, Map 10, Lot 75, 76, and 77. Um, we um, received some, Mr. Yeah, some information from Mr. Castelluccio. Um, and, um, and thank you very much for, for that. Um, there were some good points at the end. Um, and um, we're really going to focus our discussion tonight on getting third party review. And Chuck put together, do, do you understand what a third party review is? It's, it's um, somebody else coming in and taking a look at, you know, what our issues are. And we discussed last, last uh, commission meeting that um, we weren't real comfortable with the delineation of the wetlands. And some other items have been brought up, such as drainage and some soils and some groundwater flow um, and some stormwater calculations. So I don't, uh, did the members have a chance to look at uh, some of the information, um, <clears throat> the request for qualifications and proposal that Chuck put together? And we kind of based that off of the last time we had that for Randall Road. Um, <coughs> I, uh, first things first, did you read the, you in? Yeah. yeah, it's right there on top. This is the RFP, all that, uh, yes. Oh. yes, yes, yes. That's the information, um, were you here at the last, no, he was not, no, it's right. <coughs> Mr. Castelluccio, which is a, lives a on West Croft mm -hmm. Road, yep. um, okay. who is a geologist, one. and he had yeah. some, it's a lot of comments. And I, I read. I read his. Yeah, and we asked him to summarize that, what and that's what this is. Right. So um, he had some good points. Um, so um, I had some comments, Chuck. Do that again, Mr. Castrucci. Is that it, uh, Mr. Castrucci? Did you get a chance to look at it? No. It's this. Well. Your uh, classy buckthorn is Ramnus frangula, by the way. Not Asmunda cinnamonia, which is cinnamon fern. <laughs> hey. So. <clears throat> Make that change? I, 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 it's an orange. I've got some. <coughs> <coughs> um, your last sentence, I really didn't understand either. <coughs> um, on the second page, Chuck. Mm -hmm. um, the first one, two, three, four, six uh, bullet points. <coughs> the last one, if the result of the analysis is to ask the applicant to make significant revisions to the proposed work, the cost consultant might then be called on to review and revise materials and submit additional comments. I think you need to be more specific and give it, you know, we would expect you to be there in another. This would include an additional review, submittal of the analysis and conference with the Conservation Commission um, <coughs> and to attend another public meeting. Um, I think um, in lieu of some of the comments that you had made, Mr. Castelluccio, uh, and one of them is that um, to have the stormwater calcs reviewed by our engineering department. We do that as a typical with all these uh, subdivision uh, applications. And <coughs> I'd like to get some more input from him as to uh, add to this. Chuck, I think I think we're going to be adding some more items um, yeah. for review on this, and and I would like to. Uh, who is that new gentleman? Uh, 
Alex Rizicki. Yeah. So he has he had some time to look at these things, look these over? Uh, we're having a staff meeting tomorrow, uh, and then to go over the uh, FRQ to and make sure that uh, any concerns that other staff have and the request. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then we had some said some. Um, consultants that right. had listed. Um, I think those are two consultants, but I'd also put in Mary Rimmer out of Newbury. But I think, I think for this, we need, we're going to need um, some engineering expertise, and we may need to think about uh, a larger company such as Vanessa Hang in Breslin, in Watertown, VHB. Uh, I don't know if Dr. Lisa Stanley is still ahead of the environmental group, but mm -hmm. they certainly have um, significant, um, you know, engineering expertise. Yes, he could do that as well. The, yeah, we've got uh, Miss Jillian Davies yeah, yeah. with the BSC group. And, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we covered BSC, <coughs> BHB, and I was wondering if you would agree uh, because they're right up in Newburyport, uh, Horsley Witten. I don't know much about them. Heard of them? Have you worked with them in the past? On I actually have not been on a project that they've been on, but they can do both wetland and uh, the engineering part. Okay. Any other comment from Mike? Have you worked with them? The only things that I in the RFP is that uh, we're going to make it also a. Uh, no, okay. uh, a bulleted item that um, the consultant is all to uh, confer and uh, consult with the town engineer on their findings. Yeah, good point. Did you get that, Chuck? I did not. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Part of the RFP for the, the uh, third party review to have it, that that consultant would um, uh, review and. and um, Consult with the town engineer with their results and what <coughs> the uh, town engineer finds in their review of the site as well. I think one of the bullet points will be yeah. <coughs> review of the stormwater uh, dra right. drainage report. <coughs> That's a good point to add to that. Any other comments from the commission? Chuck, do you have any anything to add? Only to say that uh, okay. it's going to be changed again tomorrow, probably. And uh, but we have I have the commission's input, and then we'll just add whatever engineering wants. When is your meeting tomorrow with the other departments? It's nine. Nine. Motion to continue. Um, I have to ask: Are there any comments from the audience, the community? Yes, can, can you? Uh, yep, 66 West Croft Road. My name is Jay Chateau. I'm just curious: um, Does the town pay for this third-party review? Or is no, the applicant pays for the third-party review. So it's not out of our tax uh, roll. So the the way it works, I believe we we. Um, after we receive the bids, we make them put money into a force account, correct? Or are they just paid directly to the town? I mean, we, we, we did this a couple of years ago, but essentially it, it's part of our bylaws that if we feel that the, there's a third party review, it's on the applicant to pay it. Now, they're not hired directly, they're not hiring this third party reviewer directly, so it helps create sort that. Of my, that's sort of my question. Yeah, yeah. so. I find that you find in favor of whoever's paying you. Yeah, for no, so so it's, it's they're going to be hired and paid essentially by the town, but the applicant is going to be paying for those fees to the Person. system in the town. Okay. Uh, so it's it's not the town spending the money, but it's also not the applicant hiring the consultant. So they don't have a say in who, you guys pick who. No, we, we give. We go yeah. with the lowest bid. Yeah. That's it. yeah. So we're going to send out about five of these. We're going to go with the lowest bid. Uh, when we get that lowest bid in, uh, the applicant needs Chuck, to write a check for the entire amount. Does it have amount. to be the lowest bid because I, I it's the lowest bid that we feel is qualified to do the job? 
Okay. Um, so it's it's two things. Okay. Because sometimes I mean I worked for the city of Salem and we didn't always pick the lowest bid. Well, it's those two elements. So okay. And that can raise it up to the that's a good point. Next lowest qualified bidder. Right. right. Hopefully the the people that we you know bids can come in that for some reason they, they feel Mary's aren't qualified. Bad. What? But I think Mary's Mary Rimmer is kind of the only one. I'm, I'm not so sure that she her you know, company VHB, would be Hoy able Whitten, to uh, do it. You know, PSC. We're going to we're reaching out to people that we know are qualified essentially to do. And they have the engineering background as well to look at the stormwater drainage report, which is more engineering okay. um, focused as opposed to you know just the wetland delineation. So to get get back to the payment, the town doesn't put out any money. So the, all the money is held in an account. We set them up as a vendor. And when invoices come in, the commission needs to approve those invoices, and we'll approve them, and then they'll go through this system just like um, any bill. But they'll use that account that the applicant has set up to pay them. Sure. I was just curious if the applicant was, you know, hey, I got a guy who can give us a third-party review, and I'm going to pay him directly, and here's what he says. Everything Sometimes they offer people, and, you know, you'd be surprised. They may offer the same people we have down. You know, we, it's the same, I mean, it's in the group, you know, mm -hmm. the same people do the third party review in a lot of places, so it's not surprising that they would. But we've picked some uh, really <coughs> cool time people, uh, I feel. <coughs> it's just a start. I, I'm going to think about some other companies as Does well. Does Niche do um, what? Judith Niche? Yeah, they probably do. That'd be, they'd be really good for Sybil as well. Um, yeah, they, yeah. They have, and, uh, Burlington. But they were in Boston. Basically. They've got a Boston office, but they're in, they're primarily in Burlington. So I looked into a couple other ones, and um, they're wetland scientists that would we, we would want or doing bigger projects. So I didn't put them on the list. Yeah. Um, Dave, I did want to ask you the fourth bullet point. Does that is, read that and then tell me that it's not what you're asking for? <coughs> Maybe the project engineer and the conservation administrator review the analysis. That so it's the stormwater analysis. Yeah. Well, it's asked for the stormwater analysis above. So that a list or below or wherever it is. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah, I know. Where's? So it's. Oh, it might be in the. Okay. So the stormwater stuff is going to be brought in by the engineering department. So. <coughs> okay. uh, so have you just walked in? Um, can you sign in? Chuck Castelluccio, 62 Westcroft Road. I just wanted to know, it, it sounds like looking for a consultant that's going to do both the storm review, the stormwater calculations, and and re-delineate the wetland and Look at the wetland, yes. It won't be the same in person. You're going to need, you know, maybe a few people. Yes, but that is correct. Yes, <clears throat> that's what we're looking for. So we're looking probably for for not just a small wetlands, just a wetlands firm, but more of an engineering design environmental firm. Mm -hmm. um, yep, and your name, sir? Uh, <coughs> the Kalabashi 494 Main Street. What is the time frame for this, and is this the decision final? What do you mean by the findings? Their findings can they be rebutted or can they for the discussion? Um, it, as any kind of public meeting, they can be rebutted, but <clears throat> the time frame is April. Are we looking? So we've asked for bids to be submitted by March 12th, so that we can make a decision on the um, <clears throat> on the proposals on our April 10th meeting. Um, and then just, just so you understand, 
the, the way it will work is the third party reviewer will present their findings to us just like any other project whether it's it's the public presenting their their perspective or their input the applicant pre presenting their input we're going to take it all and make our decisions based on everything that's presented for this committee only or for other committees as well to review this is coming in front of the the conservation commission. Just conservation. Correct. No, uh, but just uh, as a caveat, it, it will be this information will be reviewed by our engineering department because they have more expertise. It's the stormwater component of of this project and the, in any potential flooding. Okay. <coughs> okay. It, Do I? Hear? Yeah, I was just going to add that um, the. Order of conditions is uh, part of any planning decision, so they would have to, they would just incorporate it into their own decision and it would be part of that too. So, whatever we find here, you know, through staff, we'll, we'll get out um, and it will be incorporated into most decisions. That's, That's what I was getting. Do I hear a motion to continue? I'll make a motion to continue. Howard Street. Are you a second? Second. Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Second. Second. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Um, <coughs> oh, it is seven. Oh. <coughs> oh, that's fast. Is it 718? <coughs> right. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a notice of intent 270-0709, 125 and 126 Azalea Circle, Map 23, Lot 125 and 126 K Street, Realty. <coughs> Chuck, do you have anything? We talked about this earlier in the day. Uh, yeah, we did. So, so, I was just, hold on a second, let me find Everything, I guess, happens last minute on the day of the meeting, and basically at 4:49, I got an email from Alex Rosicki saying that uh, he's okay with all of the uh, plans that's been presented by the applicant, and he's only uh, one verification that they own the easement that they're going to use. So uh, Sean's here to, to give us an overview, and part of the overview would be that do you have the email from Alex, or just to tell us what the what the discussion was about, and yes. what you had to do to get there. Yes. So, um, so uh, <coughs> there was uh, when we last met in December, there was a couple open issues with engineering. Uh, one or two revolved around stormwater. Uh, we've made some revisions to the plan uh, to address that as well as uh, one of the comments from the commission um, adding a stone trench along the uh, edge of the parking here uh, and we've added some additional detail of the level spreader uh, that the engineering was looking for. Uh, we resubmitted uh, the calculations um, and that's what Chuck was referring to. Alex has reviewed that and has uh, concurred um, that the, the, the stormwater meets the standards. 
the other open issue was with regard to the sewer and, and how the um, proposed house would be sewered. When we last met, uh, we were scheduling a um, survey of the existing sewer out in Azalea and Carnation. Um, that was completed and uh, what we found was uh, it was not possible to run a gravity sewer out to the street and then down to the existing sewer located here. Um, the primary obstacle is a 24 foot concrete drainage pipe that cuts across here. There's no way to get over that or under it and still meet the um, existing sewer. One thing that we found with the survey is over in the um, driveway to the, the condominiums within the uh, sewer easement, um, the existing manhole we were proposing to tie into, there were several stub uh, PVC pipes coming from that sewer manhole extending towards our property. So what we then did was had those pipes camera inspected to see where they went, uh, look at the integrity of them, and <coughs> see how they could be used. Um, we found that the pipes extend, uh, there's two six inch pipes coming from this manhole that extend uh, about 26 feet beyond this manhole. They pass underneath the retaining wall. If you recall, one of the, the butter here was um, concerned about connection to this manhole, uh, what would happen to that retaining wall. So uh, with these stubs coming through here, um, we found that we, by the retaining wall construction, it appears that the weight of the retaining wall had depressed a portion of uh, the pipes, creating a little belly. Um, so gravity sewer would not work using those stubs. So what we uh, did and what we've proposed and shown to Alex is rather than a gravity sewer running through here and having to disturb the wall, we'll install a sewer ejector pump within the house and force main it and then sleeve through the existing sewer stubs into the manhole so uh, the retaining wall will not be able to be disturbed. All this work will um, occur within the existing easement. Uh, we did submit the easement documents uh, that are recorded in Southern Middlesex. Um, and uh, one thing that uh, Alex has asked for in his email, the, the last <coughs> remaining item, uh, was just documentation that the applicant, owner of this lot, is the same successor uh, listed in the easement. They are. I've sent that to uh, Fafford. They got back to me at about 5.30 tonight and said their, their attorney will send the documents uh, tomorrow or the next day. So uh, that is forthcoming. Um, so with that, we think that all of uh, the issues are resolved. Um, and um, uh, we, we'd like that the um, uh, commission authorized Chuck to draft an order for uh, consideration at the, the next meeting. Any comments from the commission? This was made the two changes that we asked for back in December. I remember this was the only thing was the sewer that we were waiting for. So I don't have any. Oh, uh, should we be expecting like an official letter from engineering. We we'll get a memo from yeah. engineering. Uh, you know, probably on Monday or Tuesday. And has engin was engineering reviewing like the CCTV and uh, the viability? Of okay. Yes, we we submitted that. Alex asked for that. We submitted that to him as well. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I don't, I don't have any other issues then. Okay. Any comments from the community? And please um, say your name and your address, please. Virginia Adams, 59 Isaiah Circle, a closer butter. Not exactly there. Um, because you went through fairly fast on the, where the stubs were and everything, would you clarify to me again where your proposed uh, connection will be to the sewer and um, that the uh, 
ejector will be housed within the property and the structure, correct? Correct. And could you tell me again or show me on the map where that will be? Yes. So uh, the the ejector will be on the. Do it the best. Why don't you do it up there? Because yeah, you can see better. Maybe we could uh, uh, push up a little, Chuck. Sure. I think that's good. Yeah. Um, so the ejector will be within the proposed house, and then there will be a force main, uh, probably about an inch and a half, that will be buried uh, through the easement here. And it will connect to uh, the walls not shown on this version, um, but uh, about 10 feet on the uphill side of the retaining wall. So if there's a lawn area. So it will be the connection will be within the lawn area. Um, it's on the condo property, but within the sewer easement. Thank you. Any other questions? Sorry. <laughs> you don't have to say your name again. <laughs> um, the illustrations don't show the uh, abutting properties and uh, the houses on there. Do you have a slide that shows the proximity of the other structures nearby? Um, I see something. don't know that I we think do. Are right here. Those are the existing houses right there? Yeah, this, this, is, this is the existing um, condo. And this is the uh, Gentiles property here. Um, beyond that, uh, there's just a, a large wetland in between our property and the other properties uh, further down Azalea. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't think there's any plans to show. You have to use your tool in that. That's okay. No, I don't think it's on these plans. So are we comfortable with, <clears throat> sure, you're getting a, a letter with um, confirmation that, that you have that? Yes, absolutely. That, that should be tomorrow. So, so I mean, it, it's in the process of getting that, yep. but I don't think that should stop Chuck from starting to draft. Mm -hmm. So, do it. And, and if we don't have it by the, you know, if those things haven't been completed by the next meeting, then we, uh, you know, I think. Do you feel comfortable, other yep. members? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So, when we close and then, and then have you start. You can do that or you can just have me draft what, whatever you want. Okay. It'll be ready at the next meeting if you want that. We close now. We don't have to talk about it at the next meeting. Yeah. Well, we have, we could talk about it, but we, we can talk about it from this, the, the the commission. Oh, can talk right. about it with zero. Yeah. I make a motion to. We close and Chuck. Is there anything lose any loose ends that you know of that would make you not close? No, we've this been meeting? waiting a couple of weeks right. just to hear from the engineering department. It seemed to take on some legs okay. about this. Uh, as a matter of fact, you guys remember that we did the review of the drainage area at our last meeting, which I walked uh, with the engineer department and made some recommendations to make that uh, flow a little freer. So okay. that's how much time we had. We actually okay. did additional work out there at Azalea. Jenny, again? One more. Um, I don't see on the plans where the proposed driveway would be. Are you? Do you have jurisdiction over that? We have jurisdiction over the whole site. Mm -hmm. And so the, the proposed driveway would be out to Azalea uh, Circle right here. And again, this there is a plan that shows it. Yeah, it's on this plan. It's just fairly light. Oh, yeah. You can draw on that if you want. Yeah. Should we go going up to the apartment? Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, it's long. That's an apartment. I, I didn't see that. Uh, <coughs> oh, because oh, that was colored, right? Well, that's the parking uh, area. Yeah. Right. This is the same. Oh, Some good guardrail. That's the paved area and the guardrail. Right. Is that going to be? You mentioned paved area. Is that going to be impervious or is that uh, impervious? 
It is. It, it hot top impervious, and that was all included in our stormwater calculations. Um, with the exception of the two parking areas, would be a, a pervious pavement. Um, and again, as part of the stormwater analysis, we did look at those <laughs> parking areas in both cases, whether or not it was impervious or, or pervious, um, in the event the, that the, it becomes clogged. Um, there was really very little difference. It comes off the driveway and it goes into the storm drain. Yeah, so the, so the, the, the storm water uh, from the driveway flows down and comes back into the site from Azalea to a uh, leaching catch basin here and then discharges to a level spreader which will sheet flow into the, the wetlands. Um, and additionally, uh, we have roof runoff being captured by uh, subsurface infiltration chambers here and here. Um, and we were providing <coughs> approximately um, 2,900 gallons of static uh, stormwater storage. Hopefully my last question. Um, I don't see any tree delineations there. There's a number of large oaks along the perimeter of that property and will they all be taken down? We, we did uh, discuss that a little bit at the last meeting. Um, there will be tree removal. Uh, we are removing approximately 42 <coughs> trees, six inches or, or greater in diameter. Um, we will be replacing uh, 36 um, tree or tree equivalents. Um, so it'll be a total of 31 trees, 23 evergreens, eight deciduous, and 15 shrubs, uh, three feet or greater in height. Um, in addition, uh, I think we, we also discussed that we'd be providing a uh, payment of $500 for um, uh, tree removal. Able to that, be replicated. The, the, the gap between the 36 and the 42. <coughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to close. And I want 270 is there a circle? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, notice of intent for 270-0713-44 Roman Lane, Map 50, Lot 36, Carroll. And Receive some information. Um, I think this is the first time you folks are looking at that. Yeah. Uh, Did you look we, at? We receive this electronically. Well, yeah. Yeah. So. I got my paper cops. Uh, yeah, I don't mind looking at it on the computer. <laughs> no. It's there forever. Now a permanent marker. Um. Good, or? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. That was a good trace job, though, by the way. You know, I went to school for that. <laughs> I was able to hold that you've had kids. <laughs> okay. okay, so at the last meeting, we asked Matt and Susie Carroll to um, get us the document to kind of memorialize the changes we discussed and had laid out in the field <coughs> with different color tape. And uh, I think last Thursday, Matt, uh, yes, uh, uh, oh, you uh, sent them to me. Sent uh, them to you, uh, call me, yeah. And then dropped uh, hard copies off on Monday and which I ended up sending out uh, the electronic copies and asking the commission to show up and the reason if they needed to look at the copies. The reason why I did that is because our distribution day is the Wednesday prior to the meeting, giving everyone about a week to look at things. So uh, we did this, you know, different version, but I think the commission got the material, but some of them got it tonight. And, um, and that question about did they have enough time to review it and 
I'm not sure you're asking for us to close. You're only looking for further comments to prepare for the next meeting, which that's the meeting they would like to have completely reviewed and, and to close at it at that time. Yes. So uh, apologies on, on our behalf uh, that we didn't get the materials um, ahead of you folks uh, ahead of time so that you had adequate time to review. Um, there's no expectation or um, understanding on our end that anything will be determined uh, tonight. Uh, we were just looking for the opportunity to come in, yeah. um, bridge the gap from where we were on the 13th, where we are tonight, um, and uh, hopefully maybe get some feedback uh, so that we can have a com uh, complete. Um, yeah. This this was the first one, hmm. and that was the old yeah. one. On our so original uh, 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 NOI, that was so, the original uh, yep. rendering. And, the, and then really, what's applicable for us now is the one that's there's a version dated two nineteen nineteen. And this one is based based on the blue one. Based yeah. that right. is based on the uh, meeting that we had on design. Our <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then the other thing that's applicable is the Donahue survey drawing in February twenty first. Right, and I do have a Like, question. I kind of take these as, like, the, the two proposed. The rest is kind of the background of how we Street. got here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right on. Yeah. And the Donahue drawing is on the screen. Okay, on that one, um, the you've got um, grading beyond your stone wall, which is into somebody else's property. Uh, co correct. So Chuck and I discussed this on um, uh, last Thursday of the 17th when we uh, spoke. Um, that is the biggest call uh, that we kind of uh, made on that first cover page, which I'm sure you folks haven't had a chance to look at. Based on the meeting that we had on the 13th and where we uh, kind of come to a verbal understanding of where we're going to use the uh, delineation for the, uh, for the wall on the uh, to the left of the house, the wall itself came inside of the 35-foot oxbow uh, line. Um, when you discuss on the 13th, this is more um, on top of it or slightly inside of it. The way in which uh, Adam Donahoe um, came to the spot right here was that he was having an issue with the uh, uh, carrying the appropriate, uh, appropriate three to one uh, gradient right here is where he came to this uh, section right here beyond that 35 foot <coughs> line. The lines in which I uh, hear that Chuck called out and really so, um, I reached out to Adam as well and I think he was basically just showing showing the lines, but we have no intent of going beyond that uh, boulder wall um, um, as our workspace. And, and, okay, and then the other thing, I was looking at this this afternoon, and <laughs> sometimes I get messed up with, oh yeah, it's a foot lot, right? um, looking at the other contours underneath, and I'm, I think, and Carl, I'd like you to take a look at it, but see that oak tree? Here, 18-inch? Yeah. yeah. There's, it's between now a 93 and a 92, but if you look underneath, it was between a 92 and a 91. So am I right in assuming that there's a one-foot mm -hmm. increase on either side of the trunk? No, I th that's what they're saying. They're saying they're not going to fill on the, that side of the wall. That th no, this is on this side of the wall, inside their right. property. Do you see the oak tree? It's, it's a 20-inch oak. It's a 20-inch oak. I don't... Well, I, I guess I heard something. I, what I heard from Mr. Carroll just now, and you guys obviously correct me if I'm wrong. Move it over. <laughs> there, there's not going to be grading beyond this location. That these contours, and I think this is what you marked up in the right. your plan. Yes. Is, oh, okay. These contours are are not actually changing. On, on our. Oh, okay. On our next um, uh, next submittal, those will be removed too. The, oh, limited okay. work, the limited work is essentially the wall and it's 94 Got contour. It. All for right, then I will retract my comment. But think you were Would they have had to put in a, a well? Tree well, yeah. Tree well? I mean, a one foot Like a wood, wood one foot tree over time. Over really? Time. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, See, so I was looking well, at it. Extend the wall since you can't grade it down to meet the grade at the gap between the night, or basically where the 94 contour is. Well, right. I thought that was where you said you wanted that <coughs> buffer area and that the wall couldn't go to the property line. Remember? No. Um, like this is our action, this is where the wall is currently, I believe, right? The, the rear property the line rear property. is the, is the existing boulder wall. I thought that you had said, because this is where currently we have like the, um, Landscaped area. Yeah, the landscaped area, and I right. thought you had said that you did not want this to touch this wall. 
Well, it wasn't the wall that I was talking about. Was when we were laying out where we would work and where you wouldn't work, I kept on asking, why is it dying in the back of the property line? Can't you tow it in to where the vegetative buffer strip is? So I know what you're saying now, but... Um, yeah, so you're going to just have to tell us what happens because there's going to be a one-foot drop on the other side of that 94 contour line or, or maybe more. I mean, I think we... It's 91... We would prefer to carry the wall along here to meet up with this wall, like along this line. Yeah, I, I, think you just, I think you just close it off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's what we would prefer. We didn't put that there because I thought that was, maybe I misunderstood. And I think that 94 is, then you just hold that 94 line that the, where the wall continues, and I think that that makes the contours work, that makes the, the, the slopes work, and now there's no grading beyond the wall. The wall is a nice line limit of work. There's no question about where this is just what is what is that here. What you trying to say and just do it. And I would just uh, I don't have any issue with the location of the wall, just to the, the change that, that they discussed just to make the uh, grades work. Mm -hmm. You know Carl brought up a good point. Um I did with the limit line. Yeah. Yeah, just to know if it would be beneficial to see a construction limit, like a line, just to be clear on over the retaining wall, there won't be any compaction or, you know, any construction past the Yeah, line. so you just asked uh, Mr. Donahue to install or just draw in a limit of work line, which should not be, it should be on the uh, downward or the wetland side of the retaining wall. Right. And it would, be, it would be marked clearly on the plan. And the issue would be that 18-inch eight, oak tree. I think that's what Carl's, you know. Are we talking about the 20? Where does it say 18? It's the middle of the wall. <laughs> oh, gotcha. No, you don't care about trees. <laughs> or bushes. The one on the and side? Here, here is this. <laughs> where did I get that reputation? <laughs> <laughs> you know, right near where it is. Yeah, exactly. You need to, you need to move it yeah. up here. Oh. Am I I'm going up and over? Or are there uh, problems here? No. <laughs> it's good. Right here. Oh, that tree? No. <laughs> That's the tree where the curve begins. Right. Mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah. Okay. And what do we need to do with that? Careful. Yeah, yeah, just, careful. Yeah, don't touch it. Yeah. Sure. The limit line is just an extra precaution. Okay. And yeah, I think it would call out that that tree is so close to where uh, work is happening, you'd have to protect it. So there's different ways to protect a tree, two by threes wrapped around it, uh, something like that. Uh, construction fencing, which is usually orange, just in front of it. Uh, those are the kind of things that... During the con con yeah, during, during the construction? Yeah, so it's not okay. damaged, it's not hit by any machinery. Okay. The other thing I think that we'd want to see in, in the next iteration of the plans is that the not only the limit of work, the notation on the plan that says that there's going to be no grading, no construction beyond that limit of work, only um, landscape and vegetation. Well, that's what limit of work means, right? Yeah, I know, but it's nice to see the notation in there as well. So How have, do we have Donahoe include that verbiage into that? And that it's going to say that in the order of conditions, right? Right. Yeah, yeah no work beyond that. Well, limit of work means you know, you're not working on it. <laughs> and that's why I called it out because, yes, technically we will be doing work, but it's right. the mitigative plan. It's limit of work other than... There's landscaping to be in Yeah, there's, there's, there's landscaping work beyond so that. Um, well, I think and it's also, I mean, there's going to be some <coughs> language in the order right. conditions directing them or just allowing right. the planting as seen on the planting plan. Right. And one of the things I'd like to do is just make sure that those plants work for this site and the fact that it is wet. And you know, that's something that we'll do between now and the next meeting. That's why I'm a good oh, it It's a nice it's an, I looked at this online and we got it. That's why we have Carl. I think it's a nice plant list. <laughs> well, there you go. What did he say? He said it's a great plant list. 
He's nice. He's I don't want to put. I don't want to put wrong, wrong, wrong words out there. So he said nice, nice not great. Fine, That's then. all we need to know. Here you go, nice habitat. Good, good. Nice habitat. I just heard. It's a pretty big planting area. I feel like we don't use. That's, that's it is. A big no, area. I, I have produced. I am one of that planting area. Right? That's something where if I had proposed that, the client would never go for that. What? That big of a plant. <laughs> oh. That's it. This, this, this is what we're talking about, right? Yep. Yeah. A lot of the plants that they have along that wall are facultative wet plants like winterberry. Um, uh, arrowwood, uh, the dogwood. Yeah, so it, <coughs> you're appropriate. Yeah, they're appropriate. Plethora is good. The Japanese maple, I think, is behind the pool, though. Yeah, so it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So, with all that work on uh, beyond the retaining wall, the dilemma work, what would you expect the ground mm -hmm. cover? What would you expect for how they would prepare the soil over there? Because there's planting where they could just drop them in, we'll move some stuff around them so they'll take off, or are we gonna are we gonna prepare this area and we'll scrape off what's there? I mean, that's kind of bone, isn't it kind of bony in mm -hmm. there? Some of the areas are the barn is rocky. Uh, uneven. A rocky. Yeah. 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 Some there, could, there, there could be some ledge within there. Um, obviously, uh, varying sizes of uh, some of the trees. You know, from that You'd have to work around that. Yeah, because I think we have, we have to give direction on what's going on there. I mean, it, everything in this. I mean, a lot can happen to establish a garden. Yeah. So. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I guess what do you, what are your concerns, Chuck? Having some sort of like grab the whole area. And I, I guess we don't know what they're proposing as far as um, how the, you know, how this would, you know, what's the construction sequencing of what's going to happen here? Are you going to remove the topsoil or are you, were you just going to drop in these plants where there was a spot determined on site and then kind of leave whatever the, you know, <coughs> organic layer in place and leave the leaf litter there too? How tall is the proposed? I mean, I just look at the grading. Is it like three feet? Yeah. Yeah. So our, our initial thought was to take this area and plant as if as if the existing area. There's no intent to bring in additional loom or topsoil to top coat it. Um, it's essentially just fill, filling in the area. Not filling in the area. <laughs> excuse, excuse me. Filling in the area with the vegetation. vegetation. Yeah. Just planting vegetation. Just, just, planting just the planting. Any plants that are out there. You would just you would just cut. There wouldn't be any intention of disrupting the current area as it is today. Mm -hmm. It'd just be supplementing with the vegetation that we have proposed in that area. All right. Uh, so um, do you you might want to write something up so we're on the same page when I, I write it into you. A couple more. And then I mean I understand what you just Thank said. Well, in, well, taking it differently. So if you write sort of a narrative of what you expect to do, then I'll have it work for me. So maybe we could draft yeah. that and shoot that to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. In between meetings, yeah. Definitely. That way, as Chuck's drafting between meetings, just kind of get it right in there. Is, is this drawing we're looking at to be taken as a planting landscape kind of schematic? Is that? This this is the the overlay to the um, to the rendering uh, the with that we were just looking at with the elevation. Right, so you're gonna this it's your intent to make the plantings we see in this drawing located exactly as we see. Through shrubs, won't that be easy? Um, like roughly, an exact them. representation yeah. of what will well, be on site. Well, just because if that's what it is, I mean, this, you just say this is what Chuck we're doing. This is how we're going to have it. The tree. Yes, yeah, so so if that's the Variety and grouping. Of these these are the plantings that we've that we've discussed with our landscape architect that we intend on using, um, with the exception of maybe a, a small vacillation here or there. But that, 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 that's essentially where they're going to end up. Shrubs, shrubs and trees to It doesn't have to be exact. It's just one of It's within the. I, I guess I guess that was just our concern that if we had a blueberry. Uh, proposed there and it got flip-flopped and we had that uh, four feet over 
You sound said, like a big rock you can't dig. No notice of intent. That yeah, it's done all over again. It's done all over again. So I think the only thing that we would end up doing, so in the past what, what's happened is people find the nursery doesn't have their plants, they swap them out for other, for other native plants, which is fine. We're really looking for a count. We'd like to have some berries out there for the birds and whatnot. Um, but uh, we're looking for a count and you can change it because Carl and, and uh, if, if they change their planting plan to other natives and do you see any issues with that? Yeah. We, you know yeah. what our issue Because is? the native... Oh. You know what our issue, it, issues it, it, are uh, back here? I think it's really... Uh, there's an awful lot of plants in there. And I, we don't see them <laughs> surviving, been, being able to plant them, to plant all them. those in there, and, and having them to survive. And that's my feeling. Is and any of that for aesthetics? Like just to, because there's some. Yeah, you do that to appease us or not that, that that there's a, look at. not that there's a problem, but that just because I'm, I think we're trying to say is if, if there's two dozen shrubs back there could be translated into a couple larger trees that might also just survive. Yeah, I, I think it's twofold. Um, yeah. We're uh, first on the impression that that older wall will be the line of delineation, and from what there over, nothing uh, would be touched when we had the, th the clarification that that area um, you know, could be supplemented um, you know, with, with vegetation to enhance the area, um, it became a, a, a twofold, you know, one for, for aesthetics and um, yeah. um, you know, we're doing this nice work to the left there, we'd like it to look nice, yeah. um, but if we can also you know, part with, partner with you folks uh, um, because we've got, gotten to this point and you know, satisfy both parties, I, I, that's, that's the intent as well. But well, I have a question for Carl, if you don't mind. If they're a landscape architect, Put this plan together. Isn't the liability and responsibility on him to make sure that this arrangement is a survivable arrangement of plant locations within the soil? I mean, I just I would hope he is. Yes, but the landscape architect phrase goes. This I don't think this was done by a landscape. Architect. It isn't. It's done by a landscaping company. Okay. All right. And I'm not really. I think it's a nice plant list. I think we're just saying we've been there and it's just a kind of a dense area. There's some big large trees and and. And it's nice that you're not going to rub the air install as is, but that's just difficult for the plants. Yeah. So a three inch caliper red maple might just do well there versus three clethras that two might die. Right? So yeah, that's, that's awesome. Awesome. yeah I mean if if you had some guidance and direction and recommendations of yeah. That I think it's a good probably mix of some some int though. Like the dog would be beautiful. It would be beautiful. So yeah. not really sacrificing. But that gives some more clarity to you know when we do have our um, you know final application. Yeah. To, so everybody is on the same page as far as expectations yeah. for the uh, you know for the life and viability of them, as well as the actual number in which we're going to be held accountable to the. Okay. You know, so how do we pare that down then? Yes, I'm, trying to think, <laughs> I'm trying to think of it in these terms, and I tell my wife that every plant that she plants represents work. <laughs> That'll help you figure out which ones you want to take out pretty quick. <laughs> but, we, but we would need a plan, so you're gonna, you'd be back in here providing a plan of what you're going to do. Is, is the number subjective that would be amenable uh, to the commission for... If you look at this piece, haven't just, they we met? Can't see, we can't behind see behind the pool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Have they met our tree replacement policy? I mean, how many trees are coming down? So we have we have mitigation and Six. the tree replacement policy to to discuss at some point. Um, I'm not so sure they don't want to create a better looking area down there. And down here? Yeah. <sighs> just, I, I just I, felt it was so bony and I, I would, I'd have a hard time planting, I think, back there. Uh, Carl, have you, have you ever been to the site? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I went there last, or, uh, yeah, two weeks ago. What would you think about that area? Oh, I thought the same thing. That if you're planted an eight foot white spruce, you know, it might be difficult. But. I'm just trying to be practical. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a nice well, place. And sure, I mean, we would rather not 
spend money on something yeah, that's going to die either. <laughs> um, but I, but I would when Chuck, like my eyes lit up when Chuck mentioned that we could put something back there because I, I agree. I don't, I don't like looking back there currently. So, like, if you can suggest. You know, because there's a million things over there. Well, I have, I have a great idea. So we're not going to suggest anything, but we'll give you a number, and we'll we'll say in back of the pool we like that, and it looks like everyone agrees on that area, and we'll just give you a number of plants that we'd like to see planted. Everything else is up to you, <coughs> and whatever you want to do back there. But the requirements are the same. You know, leave what's there, and work through the leaf litter. But we'll come up with a number. I don't know if. Don't maybe we have the tree policy, and after the variance discussion, we'll, we'll know how many trees or shrubs we want. So they have to. Well, they're over the 35 foot line. I don't. I, mean, I was going to ask. No line, there's no line being verified here. So I was going to ask if that is an issue. If it's not, then that's that's fine. Like, doesn't think it's. I'm sorry. It's fine. I guess that's my. But my for my opinion is there's no line being verified here. Hmm. There's several lines, we just don't know which one's the real line. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's actually an additional line I heard tonight. <laughs> and any of the planting areas going on now, there's no me. impact anyway. Yeah. Just, Tom? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're just plugging and planting. You had a busy evening tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you even talked yeah. about this. What, you know, I'd hate for yeah. them to, no. oh, you got to replant it because yeah. it died. No, it was it's expensive it's like, it's like, Yeah, it is. That's a, that's a lot of plants. <laughs> so... Which would be beautiful. They're outside the 35 foot. <laughs> I mean, some of these things are going to happen anyways. I mean, they want a nice, a nice area. But uh, where does? Because it has to be written. So I need, I need numbers, and I need, I need you guys to say like in back of the pool, that's all we care about. Or as long as what happens in back of the pool, we're set. And you add stuff in that area beyond the retaining wall at your own risk, but you can't. You know, you can't grade. You can't. You have to work through the leaf litter and the organic glare mm -hmm. and all through that. Um, and if you're really and having difficulties, call us back. Mm -hmm. want to plan something. Maybe we can we can help you. Out. The native stuff is in this area. Most of the natives yeah. in what, that area. What kind of numbers do you think we're talking about, just in terms mm -hmm. of the tree policy? So if we only care about well, the tree policy, asks for a tree that's two and a half inch caliper and 12 to 15 foot tall per tree or two shrubs per tree right but you know what, what kind of numbers for this property in particular i think there's know? six six, so six, six trees six. or 12 six. shrubs six trees. and they okay. right. and i haven't looked at these numbers but i'm not sure I think just the, the yeah, plantings the that they have proposed for the dog beside the house and around the pool would satisfy what they're taking out from trees. You know, and I think I think what you want to put on the other side of the wall would be where on that side of the wall. Yeah, three red osier dogs. Well, those are no those are shrubs. Okay. I mean, it's oh, it's yeah. it's, dog, it's no. facing okay. itself too. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. right. I don't understand. So here's my point. It could be all along the back. If we, if we only care about so this planting, a lot of these yeah. are not native. You just need six trees, or if we care about this, shrubs, so these are mostly trees. native, which is yeah. great. Six shrubs. But we'd rather see native. And maybe perhaps those six yeah. trees. I think along I'd rather that see side. Maybe the that's the like you sure you want those. This is this is kind of always trying to keep protect this, keep this natural. This I is the area that all along that we've been kind of natural like and arguing over. So then, if we all right want then. the section, then I don't think that may <laughs> come up. Does that mean 12 native shrubs or 6 trees? We'll see. Right. Well, there's two dogwoods, right? So we'll now you're down to water. flowering dogwoods. And oh, no. No. Well, That's what I'm saying, behind the pool, right? Why do we need it behind the pool? Is it those are the only things we're going to make sure that they get planted, right? We don't, if we don't mind what they do in the left of the pool. So in back of the pool so was part of a different... Yeah, the back, back of the pool. So we had a, uh, yeah. an order, not an order, order but a uh, request for determination back in the day where there was supposed to be a three to five foot vegetated buffer strip. So back of the pool, if, if you want whatever you're picking out somewhere else, it's fine because that was supposed to be vegetated anyways. And is that more or less in back of the pool how you want it? Even if we don't require it, that would be what our intent with the final 
But if we didn't require, would you have something as lush as what we're looking at right now? Yes. 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 I think. And again, I know that was a point of contention from six years ago, and how that area um, kind of ended up. So this this would hope, to hopefully there. enhance what's exactly that native up uh, back there right now. You know, this is the hundred foot. Right. I don't even need to put those. <laughs> no. No, it's a lie. That's all going to say. I mean, if they want to, yeah, but they don't need to. Right. Okay. So that's a case, and they do meet the six trees and twelve shrubs, obviously, by far. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so <laughs> what? What exactly is? Where are we talking about? Yeah. Yes. The the tree people have lost me. Your native, your native species are all in here. You've got a little cluster up here, mm -hmm. and you're outside the hundred foot. With the well, yes, we don't have a line, but <laughs> um, that's right, and that's nice, but... So that's outside think, our jurisdiction. Yeah, actually. it is. And if you want to plant it, that's fine, um, but you don't necessarily have to. But in so here... You don't have to pick a spot. You just tell them we want six trees or twelve. some combination six trees or twelve trees shrubs, shrubs in this back area yeah right the, I mean I, I think that's and if we get more because you can make more work and you like how it looks I, I think so from my opinion that's great species have to but I'd like to see six but that's to be six native, trees right. twelve Japanese shrubs back in this area don't, right, right. So Native that, things that we think are going to take. We just want the area. Much work. That's all I'm asking for. So it just needs to be <laughs> the left of the pool, beyond the wall. Six or twelve, right? Oh, that combination there. I, I just want to oh. clarify. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, are you saying we want six trees or twelve bushes back here? No. No, in the over here. Yes. This, this area. Stays, this stays yeah. Stays. You want that? You keep that. Right. <clears throat> okay. So we if we want that. We keep that. But are you? No, actually. That's required now. This is because required. of the old RDA. There's there's a vegetative buffer strip that's supposed to go in back in there, so it doesn't have to go like what you have. But you're supposed to maintain but a vegetative buffer strip in back of the pool area. There's you not have that now. Yeah, just to maintain that. Oh, okay. There's not necessarily a plant quantity that we're saying right back that's there, but a vegetative buffer strip. Right. So, so the buffer strip stays. But if we find we want something bigger here and smaller, it doesn't matter what's back here as long as it's maintained as a buffer. I just want to be clear. Yep. Yeah. This is buffer strip, and you don't care how many native things go back here, but native things go back here, and there's no grass to the wall. Correct. And then over here, either six trees or 12 bushes or some combination. Yeah. Or some combination that adds up to, to, uh, to that. Yeah, and those have to be native. And those are the more critical to make yes, sure. those are more critical. Yeah. Okay. To ensure that those are native species plantings in that area. Yeah. Well, just something that's hardy enough and will live in that the white area that, you know, somebody think says, yeah, we plant those and we'll be fine. I so. okay. <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking of them as, yeah. So they've got three, they got a flowering dogwood back. No, they've got another one. Okay. So, more the pool, man. so yeah. six trees or 12 shrubs in the limit of work area. Okay. Beyond the limit of work line. We... Speaking of this, we also need that email from your neighbor allowing those trees to come down. That would have to be something we get before the next meeting. An email is sufficient. We don't need a hard letter letter copy. Yeah, if if that person sends me an email, that would be great. Or if, if they or send it to us, can I forward it to you? Or do you need them? So I can see his email here. Sure. Yeah. We'll that yeah. not be, that's that's not official enough. This is what they grow. <laughs> so, <laughs> not exactly. Well, if you want to make it more official, yeah. like yeah. if you send something that's wrong, I guess sometimes I'm, it's too loose. We'll ask for a, a signed letter. Yeah. I think Mike's asking for a letter. I, I think so. I think I don't know. To me, it's like I, not that I'm saying you guys would do that. But, my neighbor at gmail.com can just be created very easily. <laughs> For us to set that standard, it seems, see, I, I think an official letter would be more appropriate. Is, 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 has the email been sufficient to other? I, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I recall having that, but if, if we've taken that on other th oh, other things, yeah. I'm just surprised that we have. Yeah, they've come in independently. They haven't been forwarded. Yeah. So, well, I'm going to have about the email with the neighbors. Uh, I don't see that. No, 
Yeah, that's yeah. I think that's fine. I'll send it to Mike and see this is the first. Full list. Right. Right. Do you have a code word you want to give the name? Yeah. Let's give him a special code word so I know that it's him. Stop this. Yeah. Good job with that. To whom it make it. Or her. All right. Is there anything else? We got the variants taken care of. We got the neighbors. Um, yeah. Anything else come up? No. Let me put that. Yeah. That's I, think, I think we should keep. Mm -hmm. You may want to. Should want to ask the public? I'm going oh. to. All right. Any comments from the public on this project? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I think we should continue, but I, I think Chuck should start drafting the, the order of conditions as we've discussed, and, and I think we should be ready, you know, what, for, uh, to review and try to get this prepared for next meeting. Uh, I make a motion to continue. Uh -oh. Yeah, all right. What? Well, you no, have I something agree. else? I agree with continuing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It was a good application. <laughs> We're learning. Did you do this? <laughs> Not bad. No, it's good. Is it? We've had practice over the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have like one more? A few years of practice. <laughs> <laughs> one of those what? There's like a home architect and I was getting applications on this. Oh, no, no, no. We, no, we did hire somebody to make the. Oh, I was just thinking I like the layout and all the pictures. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to skip these articles, uh, yeah, those are two extra ones. Okay. That's mine. Yep. No, I'm so good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chuck, do we have old <coughs> business? Are you looking at the old um, agenda? I guess I am. Town Force Committee is here. I was wondering. I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> what are you here for? <laughs> Uh, I don't have the right, I don't have the up-to-date agenda, I apologize. So, uh, I have a program to selectively thin some trees in the town forest. So this is the second, um, this is the second time we've talked to them. Right. I think there was a site uh, planned, but it was... Oh, it was a hurricane. Yeah, it was a hurricane or something, so. so it was canceled. So... No reason to cancel. Yeah, it's not a reason to cancel, <laughs> not with this crew, but, uh, you know, we have to... Safety first. Safety first with the residents. Hey, Can I start? I got a pine tree sitting on top of it up in Pearl Street. What happened? It went right across it. It fell. It missed everything else in the yard except the car. It fell perpendicular to it. This Was there anybody in it? No. Yeah. Wow. You know the barn they did over into the house? Up on Carter, Pearl Franklin Street. and Pearl. Well, I'll the take a look. Yeah, yeah, I know the intersection. Green intersection. Yeah, well. barn there that they did open house. It's in front of that. One house in. That's a barn, actually. Yeah. And an ex Honda. Wow. Good thing nobody has a little. It looked like much of a log hauler. They end up a. Uh, you know, I, I'm always talking about the the, the V trees. Right around the corner on Linear Lane. They one of those come down, went right through the roof. Mm. That's okay. with right at the, the B. Okay. And uh, go ahead. Aaron. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm Bill Sullivan, 44 Blueberry Lane, and um, the chair of the Town Forest Committee. I'm joined by four other members Kurt Habel, uh, Tom Gardner, Dan Ford, and Farouk Najmi. So, what we'd like to speak with you about, and you got a little bit of an introduction but at our, our meeting a few, a few months ago, mm -hmm. but uh, wanted to talk about. One of the ways that we're looking at improving the health of the trees in the town forest. Uh, back in 2010, a forest management plan was prepared that where a forester went out, took a look at the condition of the, the trees in the town forest and had some recommendations. Uh, they talked about uh, all age management, it's called. It's a term in forestry has, that divides trees into three classes. They're the, the saplings, the poles that are four to nine inch in diameter, and then the larger trees that are larger than nine inches. Ideally, a healthy uh, forest has all three. Whereas many areas, a number of areas in the town forest were, that were planted in the 1930s, and you can still see them, you know, the, the rows all in a line and really close together, they're now getting old. And so it's coming to the point where they'll be more susceptible to, you know, droughts, disease. Uh, there's red pine scale out there. Uh, 
uh, insects and fire. So the fact that for years that the town forest had been harvested periodically, it's not anymore. And it hasn't been for quite a while. So, you know, the conditions are actually kind of getting a more of a, a monoculture, and it's not really that that healthy for the for the long term uh, protection of the, you know. Not, not to change the subject, but why would they stop harvesting? That seems like appropriate forest management. Um, I just didn't know if you know if it was a quick answer. If not, I think they just stopped. Kurt they just, cost, just stopped. Huh? Interesting. Okay. Cost yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's good. No, I appreciate your questions. So the idea would be to, to, to get a better balance of the age class of these trees and uh, to prepare them, say, for, for natural disasters. So that was 2010. Now where the current effort is to, we've retained a, a certified forester to develop a kind of a pilot plan, not to do the entire forest and go in and, you know, do a lot of thinning, but to try one limited area, about five acres, and to see how it goes. Um, the idea would be to you know, open up the canopy so to get, allow more sunlight to come down. That's what the saplings need for them to take off. Uh, it would be about removing about 20 to 25 percent of the trees, so that's one in four or one in five, uh, and that would then you know be, would be enough to to have them go. There are some areas where the the, the red pines are diseased with the the red scale. The forest were recommended up to 50 percent of those trees, but that's you know that's the recommendation that's to be determined. Now uh, the point would is that it's better to get them now while they're still alive, because some of this is going to go into economics, right? I mean. If you know, t putting this out bid, the the healthier the tree is, th the better chance we'll have it to be. You know, where the goal is to get like a, a, a neutral, so that it doesn't have a big uh, cost impact in, on the on the town. So the location of this proposed pilot is on this site plan, which you wouldn't mind passing mm -hmm. around. Sure. <clears throat> I have a quick question. Sure. Yeah. Another side question. Uh, what ha when you remove the trees, what happens to the stumps? Do they get removed as well? No, the stumps stay. stay. They're flush with the ground. Flush with the ground. Just flush with the ground. It's easy. Yep. Yeah. And eventually they'll they'll rot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you'll see the, the the blue circled area. That's south of the council ring. Sorry. <clears throat> That's an extra one. Okay. So the, uh, <coughs> so the area says proposed pilot area. This is kind of a, almost like a, a manta ray shape. Uh, it's just south of the council ring. It's about five acres. And there would be the, the, uh, the timing of it. You know, obviously we're concerned about impacts and that's you know why we're here <coughs> uh, would be you know during the dry months so that obviously we can't do this during mud season uh, the method there's a the forest has said that there's a couple of different ways to do it it could be done with you know hand falling with chainsaws there are some different types of mechanized means of removing the trees uh, but uh, that is again to, to be determined. There's a kind of a whole process, and we're really at the very beginning. You're you're the first group that we've really spoken to, um, and so the next step would be speaking to, you know, the, the selectmen, and then having public meetings and that type of thing to get input from the public. But uh, we want to get your input early on, just so that we can address any concerns with, uh, you know, wetlands and, and environmental impacts before we get too far down the road. So what we'd like to do is, and what we talked a little bit about at the, the Town Forest Committee meeting <coughs> that uh, I'm sure that you attend was to um, set up a site meeting, to go out and take a look at it, we really see what the, what the areas are, see what the concerns are, sensitive areas, and you know, roll that into the plan. Do you know where the Coyote Denning area is in relationship to this uh, blue circle? I see coyotes everywhere in there. Pretty much yeah, but there day. are signs. There's a sign. You know, when you come from the compost pile, it's over like, down here is where I think the the, the compost pile is. Uh, where, yeah. So this this is heavier in the coyote uh, population, as I understand. Mm -hmm. Kurt, you know the, this better than I do. <laughs> signs were put up some years ago, but I don't. Not sure if they really mean anything. 
Um, okay, yeah, because it's on that, it's on that little trail. I, I cross country ski back there, and it's on that trail. Come from the golf course. Um, I could actually. They do seem to hang around the compost area. They do. I think they might eat things that live in the compost, but that's Probably. just a, an idea. Yeah. So this is the trail you're talking about that comes from the golf course and goes over this causeway. Yeah. It's, it's actually yeah. The, the council ring is above there. It's actually it's this area right in here. Because then there's this is this is the right you take and then this. Yeah. 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 It's right in here that I've seen the signs. Exactly. Yeah. This this is the concentration that I've uh, heard about. So why why five acres? Why the the shape? Is there any method to that size? Whether it's gonna, why not less? Why not greater? Yep. You know, um, that's a, that that's, uh, really goes right to the crux of it. They, when we had the forest around, we kind of walked around different areas. Some of the areas are not readily accessible, to, um, to, you know, to get to be able to skid things out. Mm -hmm. uh, others, we, it goes to the economics of it. If it's too small, we're not going to get anybody to come in, and we don't want it to be too big because we want to. Make sure this works it's before we jump study, in. Yeah. It's a pilot study, exactly, exactly. So that was the size that the forester thought was optimal so for getting enough interest. In. How many trees do you estimate in this area? Well, is it 25, 20, 25 percent of them? I, I understand the ratio, but is there like 500 trees in there? 5,000 trees, or <coughs> I would say somewhere in between. <laughs> yeah, five acres. Yeah, because yeah, it's the, good quantum leap. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the time frame to see a result? Like what ye oh, years? I'm assuming it would be years. Yeah. Yeah. But they, you know, according to the forester, once the, it opens up and the sunlight gets down, it's going to flourish. Yeah. Yeah. Could, yeah. The understory yeah. just takes off. Cool. No. One of the things that we don't well we hear about the huge ones out of the West Coast, but natural forest fires are are actually good for forests in terms of cleaning up all the, mm -hmm. the crap in the bottom. Weak trees die off anyway, but it really, it, it's one of the components to creating a, a healthy forest, so I've always read. Mm -hmm. I know you're not going to have any planned burning in there, but is this a similar kind of approach to, in lieu of the burning and whatnot, is just this is the same kind of way of improving the health of a forest? It, well, right yeah, here. because by, you know, encouraging new growth, that's that's really sure. what we're doing here. And the fact that we have these stands of, I mean, if you, uh, if you go in the council ring, you look up at the, the crowns, that used, to, that used to be full. Now, many of those trees in, the, in parts of the town forest, all you have is the crown because they've lost the, the, the needles all the way up. Part of the reason is that's not a, that's not, that was deforested, right, early 20s, 1900s. And then that was replanted, right? It was. I think that was, I don't. I'm not sure which area this was, but there was a lot of farmland there. And then in uh, 1930, it became the town forest. Yeah. And then at that time, that's when the plantations were were planted right. and they had all these pine rows and things. And so well, you can tell when you walk in. Like, mm -hmm. You I mean that nature doesn't make it that perfect? And all, <laughs> nature doesn't like straight lines. <laughs> is is have, one of the, um, the plans for this to, to let this naturally reforest, or is this going to be replanted? It will be fashion? naturally reforested. Yep. One of the things the forester said was that there are certain times of year, uh, certain sorry, certain seasons where the the white pines will drop a bunch of pine cones. So if we could sync it up with that, that would be ideal. Are you proposing to do this work during uh, frozen ground conditions? No, dry season. It would be dry, whether it would be, the ideal time is fall and winter. And so the ideal time is when the ground's frozen. Yep. Mm -hmm. It minimizes the yeah. skidding. Because it, it is dry because that you've time. Got but two, the ground two. is frozen, that's the best time of year for, mm -hmm. to go in and do any kind of cutting. Mm -hmm. Two of your lines are along wetland areas. Yes. And. <clears throat> How do you propose to, I mean, you, you've got a skitter going in there, right? Well, they're, they're fairly, I think if we, like on the sidewalk, we'll be able to, we're not proposing to do anything in wetlands. So this is all in, in, uh, in upland. upland. It's in the buffer, obviously. But so it's, would it's, like a better, would a blown up scale be useful for us or no? And I have the, uh, 
the Forester's letter, if that would be of interest to the plan. I'm just, I'm just a little concerned. I, I, yeah. I've seen a lot of logging operations up in Maine, um, and uh, they can make a mess. <laughs> so I'm just concerned. How are you going to protect what? The wetlands. I was going to say, you know, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, up in Maine and up in New Hampshire, they can make a mess because they're allowed to make a mess. So this is, you know, this is a, a much smaller area, and we do have to ask about access and what happens to the slash and all that. But I mean, that's and then and then the repair when we're done. I mean, we're creating a new road. Um, but yeah, let's let's start talking about that and all those things. It, Rather than just clear cut too, you can put specifics on how the logs yeah, because, uh, right. I've, I've hiked up some places where they've just logged and I'm stepping on everything and falling through it. It's but a mess. It's, they leave it's tough. everything It's behind. tough walking through that stuff. <clears throat> it's dangerous. Oh, yeah. just rough, no, right? I don't expect that that's what we're going to get. No, there. no, that would, that would certainly <laughs> are you, not be uh, Are you able to uh, sell what you harvest? And, and that's where the economics come in. If they're dead, no. But if that's why we kind of want to grab them now while there's still some life in them. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, then they will have some value that would offset the cost. What we don't know is, is it valuable enough that it'll cost us nothing? Or do we turn a slight profit or do we, you know, how much do we, well, and that gets into the... Did the Forrester, was it Forrester able to... to it, it's, it's variable. Depends on what's the, on the, the market for trees at that time. Um, you know, are they making pellets or not, or you know, yeah. can it be used, or the condition of the individual trees? So that we really, they, he couldn't put an answer to. He, he thought it would be a, a round revenue neutral, but he, you know, he said couldn't hold them to it. Has there been anything looked at about uh, making chip fuel out of this? It would. It, it that kind of goes to the market too. Yeah. Exactly. You know whether. I mean that's that's a clean way to do it. They just yep. take the whole tree and they, dead alive. They just chip the whole thing and mm -hmm. it goes out and you make make the money from the chips. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't. It, there is no. Well, whether they're making pallets or you know, uh, is pine good to that? But you know, red pine and eastern white pine is there's a value to that at any time. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're cutting enough trees there, obviously you know loggers that go into a, a property and cut trees down, um, you know the the landowner makes money um, ninety nine percent of the time when they go in. So it's usually not revenue neutral. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would be, I would be very suspect for anyone that's coming in and telling you this is going to be revenue neutral. Well, and this gentleman is, is not a logger, right. he's a forester. So the people that would be doing the cutting would be the loggers. Right. So as our representative, the forester, would then you know, work with us, tag the trees as we feel are appropriate, then we would get uh, quotes or bids from <laughs> loggers that would come in and then you know, obviously under conditions of, you know, minimizing damage and slash removal and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we would, they would, and then we would select from the... you have any idea of location and the number of wetland crosslinks that you'd have to do to get to this area in order to make it uh, feasible and viable for them to actually get in with the equipment and out with the product? I, I think that there are roads that go right... Yeah, you This do. road goes right yeah. through. Yeah. This is the Most. council yeah. right here. So this is all roads. Those are all roads. Okay. So we'd be talking on either side of the road. I've never been in there, Dave. <laughs> I just don't know where that is. I have been in there, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, you can drive the scouts drive right up to the council ring. Right? Okay. And then yeah, right. those roads supposed. are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so I know they drive up there. I so there is a road. Back to the now they, they, they don't want you to do it anymore. Yeah. They talk all the cars up there with the okay. scouts and boy scouts, but they say no. Yeah. So the access manager of the forest said no. <laughs> <laughs> walk with all that stuff in there now. Well, yeah. Well, I used to, not anymore. So who's cleaning up all the slash? Because I, the foresters, I mean, does the logging company do that? We can put whatever conditions are required in in there. Are really? I mean, you know that obviously impacts the bid. Yeah, I mean the the forest. We talked a little bit about the slashed, and some places they, if it's going to not the big pieces, but the small, you know, pine needles and things that 
are actually beneficial once they decay. In the short term, you know, you see it, but in the longer term, it's beneficial. So, but that, those are all the the details that would go into the yeah. bid document. Um, <laughs> Jeez, that's and more idea. requirements. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah, that's. Wait, you know, you got the compost yeah. pile there. I mean, yeah. Can I put my slash back there? The yeah. Maybe something. Yeah. That would take yeah. them very far. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. They they uh, cut down some stuff in the back of my place, and um, that's the pile's been there for seven years. It's still. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good job for yeah. the Boy Scouts okay. to bring something like out to the council the ground, ring, bring so something back. It's not it's touching it's the ground. <laughs> it's in a pile. <laughs> the the problem is it lasts, ends up lasting a long time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the compost is right there. I, I mean, I would like to see no piles and that it be pulled out. I mean, I don't know what the rest of the commission feels no, I, like. No, I agree. And, and well, I, I think, I, I, I agree. I think there needs to be consideration to what the forester is recommending for regrowth if if he's indicating there should be something I think we want to make sure that I mean we want to do this right um, not just clear cut and make it clean and would they chip up some of the slash there no it would be dragged out hauled out yeah maybe they can just haul it all the way out to the uh, compost area and then you know I forgot what that's called was it called they cut all the cut all the branches off the Trunk of a tree. Lim. Lim 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 Bucket, isn't it? Bucket. Oh, yeah. I guess, <coughs> just from my standpoint, I mean, you're well aware of a lot of our concerns. It it, it sounds like a something that should be done. Mm -hmm. What are the What are the next steps? I mean, you're you're mm -hmm. far from actually getting this. We're far, very far. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the next step is a would be a sidewalk, and we could actually you know see what other things. You know mm -hmm. that we want to make sure the limits of it we could talk about. Yep. Uh, then the next step would be talking to the selectmen, the public meetings, and you know, and then uh, putting the document together for bidding with all the conditions that we want in terms of slash and limbing and whatever else. I mean, um, I don't know. It would define the limits and and uh, I'm just meant and uh, then tagging and then putting it up. Uh, and, and then how would this get dealt with get from a, a do we want to zero permitting to a standpoint? Go under, I, to I mean, this, okay. it would really yeah, be, because it's going out to bid, it's not necessarily yeah. going under yeah. like the town-wide permit, right? No, no, no our forest would be plan would, uh, I mean, we'd have to look into it, but I, I don't, I think we would just ap approve the forest cutting plan, which is what is going to be represented by the forester. So do you cut everything down it's like a, at a certain width in that blue uh, no, in that just blue area? It because we're yeah. the it would be the just the mark just, breeze, just right? the, the old ones, yeah. really. And so we just the uh, yeah, every fourth or fifth yeah. okay. Uh, oh, okay. of the older trees. So and, and, and that's gonna be a, a judgment call sometime, you know, right. they, and what the forester said it's it's not just random. They'd look at specific ones and they say, this guy, this guy, this guy and they'll tag them and mm -hmm. that's what's this area been paint marked? No, this is nothing. There's been nothing marked. Nothing marked. Yeah. We're a long way from that. So that's one of the last steps, really, before that. So I, I heard the next step is a site walk. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I walk, um, for sure. Is it a site walk walk or a site drive walk? <laughs> We're going to well, make you, you know, park. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to make you, you park at the drive Meadowbrook vehicle. Country Club. Jerry County, right by the compost pile. I keep going straight. <laughs> not driving. I'm going to go all the way to that T and I take a left. <laughs> you are not driving. So, um, just making sure you circle back around and talk to Mike Hannaford, mm -hmm. and he needs to be a co equal partner in this uh, situation because he's actually, tree yeah, he's a, the not tree only is he the tree warden, but this might be an area. And he was at that first meeting. He was. So, if you should be invited to the site walk and any courses and stuff like that, so we have to tie him into what we're doing here. Is anyone going to the forest management breakout session on Saturday? What? Now we have to talk about who's going at all. Yeah, there's a there's a breakout session at the uh, MACC conference Saturday about forest management. Nice. Uh, Are you going? It's like you just found a. Yeah, Dave, you got something going on there. Yeah. I was one, one of the only ones. The problem is, is that when the 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 uh, the uh, 
the ones that they have that I was interested in, like the identification of the soils, those always fill up. They always do one of those. They love it. All right, so we can almost finished, and uh, we can get on with other things. So we've addressed access, the slash, the selling, and I guess that your committee will be putting together the uh, contract. Um, are you asking us to review the contract? It doesn't seem like something we're qualified to do, but we would we like to see them. To. As soon I, mean, as, uh, I would think you'd want to see the conditions. We'd want to see what's well, in, but I don't know. I'd rather review the forest's recommendations and whatever yeah. comes from the contract that you put together, but and that's just me. Do you have the Forester's cutting plan? Or? I have their, their, their recommendations in this letter from June. Is that from 10 years ago? No. Oh. Actually, this one is on the, our, the website for the Town Forest Committee, the Forest Management Plan. So if you want to get the, the details of 2010, those are all in there. Uh, but, and this letter that will be passed around has you know, the more recent recommendations on what to do. And it really gets into the, some of the specifics of the pilot program. So this is all on your website? I can just... I that, can just uh, that is on minutes, but... Oh, okay. It's on, it's, yes. But, yeah, there's enough there for everybody. It's the same. Uh, is this um, study done in February? Yes, they were, one of their trips was in February. I think this, I read the report. Yeah. I think that's, they've only done that once. They said it was like um, a $3,000 fee to have somebody go in there. Must they wait the forest through in there. They, no, that's oh. a different Is that a different, no, some different, different study? Yeah, no, this was real. It's like, it's like $1,000. Oh. So then, uh, scheduling, how does that? Uh, I think Becky's available at any time, but I'm, I'm hoping this is happens when it's warmer out. <laughs> <laughs> Not available at any time. You want to go through the cold? It's, it's, oh, yeah. What's, what's the timeline that yeah. you think? You, you I, just I would say that a, a better, a, a concern with waiting too long is that now, in some ways, is actually an ideal time to really see into, you know, the, the skeleton of the... And plus the ground's frozen, forest. you can walk around a lot more easily. Mm. Well, it's not that hard walking. Through. So if we, if it was... I mean, you're driving out there, so... Well, I'm out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, for the walking, it's a Can't wait for the report about bees. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, you're open to speed it. Open to speed it. Uh, well, there are a few in there. Is there any change? Oh, They're not supposed to be, but right. what? About timing. I'd love to go with all of you. Yeah. Side note. What's a good What's a good time for you to go? Lunch time would be the easiest excuse for me. <laughs> or early in the morning. Or Saturday. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sa Saturday's. Oh, whoa. Sorry. I know on that. <laughs> <laughs> She's not around all the time. Or if you're, just, you know, <laughs> Chuck, if you're walking through for a second or third time too, I can just tag along. So. Uh, you know, a lunchtime would work out. Um, I wouldn't want it to be on a well, early morning Friday. Well, for me, lunch would work. I'll, I'll work with it, whatever lunch comes works, up this well, Saturday. Would work out. Oh, Saturday's not gonna work for me. <laughs> it's just not gonna work. Not not in the winter. Yeah. No. In the spring. When are we? When are you gonna plan this? To actually do the work? No, no. To do oh, the to site do visit. The site visit. We were thinking sometime in, in March, but if that's not going to work, then uh, we could mm -hmm. maybe do it. I think we can make that work. Yeah, I can yeah. tell. You're not going to squeeze it. I'm busy, but break. you guys. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> So if we leave right six, now, we can leave. Yep, we're to the 16th. We're going to have a few months later. All right, no, let's see. No, no. Me, but no. Maybe before St. Patrick's Day? March the 9th to the 16th. Well, I thought we were avoiding Saturday. I'll be on it the weekend, never work. Those are two Saturdays. Oh, okay. Those Tuesdays? Yeah. No, they're Saturdays. No Saturdays. I'll oh, okay. make this stuff right. up. <laughs> Those are two Saturdays. Saturdays. No. Um. <laughs> it would be important to get the chair of the conservation Certainly. Certainly. Out there. Okay. So maybe, is it a noon work for you, Monday yeah. through Thursday? Not Monday or Wednesday. Or Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday or Thursday, yep. How those were Saturdays? 
<laughs> Who else? Does that work for everyone else? Mike, does noon work? Yeah. You just said that would be fine. Noon what? Bob. When? And Dave. Well, we haven't picked it yet. It looks like it would be the week of the fourth, or the week of the, well, the week of the third, or the week of the tenth. The week of the seventeenth. I don't know what you were thoughts were around the sixteenth. <coughs> and I know noon would be good for for Mike Hannaford too, like during a work week and all that, and it's easier. Yeah. We do the fifth. Next time. So are you saying which, which days of the week? Well, the 9th was on the week of the 3rd, and the 16th was on the week of the 10th. Week 16th, I can't do. 16th, 17th is up for me. How about like the 14th? You can do Thursdays, you said? Yeah. 14th? 14th. At lunchtime? At this point. Can you do it? Which day did you say it was back for you, Becky? So the fourth, the week of the fourteenth, we would have a site visit a on the twelfth. It's a Thursday, right? Meeting on the thirteenth, and this on. Yeah, the I like 14th. hanging out with you. <laughs> and I understand. I understand. Um, so that's a busy week. So we could do the twenty-first. I mean, or the seventh. Yeah, the seventh. Seventh. Yeah. I, I can't do the seventh. Seventh. Yeah, twenty first. I think it's seventh. Oh, so seventh. Oh, on the seventh, the actual seventh. I can't do the seventh. I can't or the do the fifth or the seventh. Yeah, you you'd be able to walk that far? Well, that's why I'm driving I'll, with all the drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm no, no. seriously. Are you gonna be good? I'm driving with Bob. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? Yeah. Oh, you're driving. No, he's not kidding. He is driving. Nineteenth. <laughs> Anybody? I'm good at the 19th. I'm fine. I think I'm good. That's a, what is that, a Tuesday? 19th? No. Why is it not a Wednesday? 19th is it? It's a Tuesday? Tuesday. At noon? I'm free at noon time. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to. Uh, is, is the real. Okay, if the 19th works, is the 5th out? I mean, if the. Obviously, time's kind of. Now he's time, trying to. Time get sensitive, time, yeah. yeah. Time sensitive, so, I mean, if, can we move it up and just get it over with? So, how about the. Fifth, the twelfth, the nineteenth. Which one works best? Any of those Tuesdays is fine for me. For let's, let's, the let's not do the twelfth. I, I, that's like taking a whole day off of work for me if we're doing site visits and and. Uh, so the fifth. Yeah, fifth is fifth. That's good. Good for you. Is that two? That's next. Early. Uh, no, that's no, that's good. Good. Next Tom, Tom yeah, Gardner next finished in the seventh. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. He's available. Next Tuesday. It's later in the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Huh? So Tuesday. Are we talking about doing it like at noon time? Yes. Yep. <laughs> I like to do the fifth then. Okay. Fifth. Oh my God. So is everybody good for the fifth? <laughs> yeah. Easier time. I think pick so. Up. <laughs> <laughs> my kids. No. All right. March fifth. Fifth at noon. At town dump. <laughs> the compost. Compost. Right. Jordan's is on the town dump. <laughs> Actually, not How are you going to get in? <coughs> Chili's in the. Uh, <laughs> I'll contact Mike uh, Hanford tomorrow. I don't know about that, but we what? can get in. How are you going to get in there. if the, if the uh, gate is locked on Tuesday? With gate? your vehicle. Doesn't matter. Oh, the gate to the compost will be locked on Tuesday? Yeah, oh, that's right. They're not open during the week. Right. Mm -hmm. they're, they're well, don't tell them that now. They've been working in well, every day. If, if, uh, if Mr. Uh, Hannaford's so coming, he's got a key. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we need to get a hold of him right away and find out if we can, uh, you know, make this happen, if he can come yeah. with us. I think that we can get in no matter what. Yeah. Maybe he's not available. They, they, don't, they don't have any boulders up past the compost, so you can't drive out there, do they? Uh, I don't think so. Well, they, they never did. No. They, they put some wooden so. signs up so you don't drive out, but they haven't, they haven't bouldered it yet. Why <laughs> did you drive over the All televised. Over the compost. <laughs> Off the it's, not as, it's, it's not as accessible as you would think. We have a young audience right. that watches us. <laughs> Sounds like we've got a plan. One thing to be aware of, though, the last time I was in, it was a little icy. So keep that in mind with the yeah, jack tracks or something. So I should bring plenty of salt. <laughs> <laughs> if you get stuck in there, you might be in trouble with the funny. Conservation <laughs> Commission. <laughs> you stuck somewhere in the town. <laughs> 
Huh? Sounds like we got our plan. Yeah, we got a plan. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, yeah, I'll get a hold of money. Do you want me to get back to Tom, the Town Forest Committee, or? Town Forest know? Committee would be great. Okay. That way he'll, we'll I'll do that. I'll keep you informed. I'll okay. get back to the Town Forest Committee, talk to Mike tomorrow. Um, we'll let him know what we're going to do and if he wants to go up there. So this is just a site walk. No trees are going to be marked at this point just to get a... Just an idea of what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Terrific. Thank right, you very thank much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> The green tent. Yeah. Boy. It's yellow. It's yellow. It's yellow, but you know, almost like it moves. Is this what? The agenda. That's it. Only business. Just because it's not. It's not. It's not. Excuse me. It's yellow in places and other places. <laughs> That's like looking at one of those 1950s leisure suits. That's cool. Because they look like blue and then purple and then gray. And so I know. It, it, it wasn't the 1950s. I know. It was. It's a 70s. 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 Yeah. It was father and brother. Yeah, and I've read some like articles about this. Yeah. Did you have one, Dave? A seersucker suit. I had a leisure suit. I did. A seersucker yeah, nah. jacket. And then one of those. Zero. Saddle shoes. Whoa, oh boy. It's not <laughs> It's going nowhere. It's not going to be that zero. Point. I think it's gayer than a pair of saddle shoes. Ten thousand dollars. Saddle shoes, but I had a couple of. There's a there was a guy next to me in Freiburg. Black Forbes shoes. And he bought the property. I have a pair of those. High high heels, but yeah, bottoms. Yeah, and I look like. I didn't realize he clear cut this piece of property, but the clear cutting he sold to buy the property. Wow. He brought the. He bought the property off his father, but that's, that's how he bought it. We had a huge it is it's like, and oh, I, I forgot to say, the guy who does work on him. It's amazing. All right, just conservation because we're so. And we're it. moving on. We're almost done. It's not stall. I know there was like that big stall that happened. So, administrative report. There's none this week. Fell off the end. Emergency permits. There's none this week. There's no approved. Uh, there's no bills to approve. But there's minutes. Did anyone have a chance to look at the minutes? Are you sending me an email here? <laughs> Come on. I have comment. You know what? I want to give you this. You know what? Chuck, 123? Yeah, thanks. 123? Yeah. yeah. Did everyone else get minutes through the email? I, you did I send it to me. I Getting any minutes from me? I don't know. I got right. the ones from a couple of weeks. Mm. But I don't know if I got them this time. I got, the I, thing, I got the thing that had to do with picking out what we want to do next year. Or well, why don't you take a minute that. and look at the minutes I have? And uh, no, I guess 13. No. Okay, Check. What's that thing about, about picking, defining what it is that you want the conservation committee to focus on or do next year? Annual report. Oh, the annual report. Oh, one, one, yeah. one thing at a time. Let's get the minutes. But that's what I got. I, I, didn't, I didn't see minutes for reviewer. I'm just, yeah. Did everybody else get that? I got I that did. one. Yeah. But I don't think I got minutes. I don't think uh, I got any minutes. Yeah. Alright. That's just residents' names, so I'll put those in. So while Mike's looking over the minutes, uh, is anyone going to MACC? I don't know. Carl was thinking about it. Dave is often there, but maybe missing it this year. I don't, you know what, I, I went, uh, this is like the second year in a row that I, and I was a little bit tardy, but I went probably maybe a month ago to, to sign up for that. And um, it's the last one that they had, they had a soils identification thing. I went on to, to uh, sign up to go, closed. This one here, they had a plant identification one. And it was in two di two separate sections, closed. Mm -hmm. They only offer one of each of them, and it, you know, obviously it was a, you know, because if you look at the other ones that were still open, that was obviously something that was highly desired. So it would be nice to see if it's something that is that desirable that they do more than one session. Yeah. You know, because I, it, there's two two years that I would have gone had I been able to get into that section. And because that was really what I wanted to go for, 
I'm like, I'm looking at the other things. I, I kind of thought about going the one that you said that someone from your, uh, from Arlington is doing. Yeah. And then there was the other one that that has to do with uh, um, forest management. But it really was people that have forest, like town forest management, and like. Um, there's a, one of the people that it's an Audubon person that's speaking about the management of their forests. I'm like, you know, that's that's macrocosm. I'd be looking at more microcosm than that. So that's not really something that I, you know, I want to go and, and go for something that I really want to go in and and listen to. Uh, I thought the guy that was uh, doing the uh, the talk on um, the solar, putting solar in, you know, for reduction of carbon footprint, he sounds a little interesting, but not enough for yeah. me to go to the Holy Cross for the day. So I've gone for, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. I haven't gone every year for 15 years, but yeah. I used to work for MACC yeah. and went a lot every time then. Um, so the secret about these conferences, don't let this out, is you just, just go to any class you want. You may not get a handout, but you'll find a seat or you'll Stand in the corner, and you'll you'll it's it's fine. Everyone there's always a everyone in the know it. does that. And as a matter of fact, when it becomes boring, they get another one. Uh, they go and walk into it, the the next one they're thinking about. So don't ever let something being you know filled bother you. you can always find room to be in there. Mm. So. Um, and then unless they do anything like if you have a badge or a tag or a, s a receipt or something that says you're signed yeah. up for the class, just so you that you just get can't a take the material and, and you something? may have to give up your chair. So yeah. those are the only two things. You have what? what? The give up the chair was my question. Yeah. yeah, you may have to give up a chair. Just bring a chair. Yeah. <laughs> There's usually plenty. You could bring a chair. You could just bring a chair from another. Been, another uh, time, you know, time I went there was room. people that were standing. I do remember people standing. Yeah. The line. It's like no. I'm not going to go and stand for a two-hour presentation. I've never been. Yeah. I don't. I've never been in one that was that was full. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. No. Yeah. I didn't. Maybe two hours. Really? Yeah. I've been in some that even though we had the right yeah, amount like, of people, we like didn't have enough stuff. Nine to eleven forty-five. And, and so uh, is is anyone going? I'm just wondering. I'm not I going. can't go. No. Oh. Guys, come on in. Uh, you can uh, tell my wife to uninvite the uh, in-laws and. I'll be down there. Maybe we should go to your house. Sounds like it's a <laughs> I think it would be a great field trip for the in-laws. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. So, you know, one of the things that they need to do, home, right? <laughs> what you're saying, is they need to videotape each one of these in no. some form so there could be more interactive use of this and just charge five bucks or whatever to look at it. I, I think people would really access that. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll tell you, that's you know a great point. Because a lot of the videos that, like, I've, I've gone to an organization called the Plain Owners and Ponds Association, and they do all this uh, air safety it? stuff. Oh, and look, it's 9 o'clock. Currency. Don't a couple of you have to for, go? For recertification. <laughs> yes. What's this? And it's hugely popular. I mean, rather than have to travel around the country yeah, and put these seminars on, we're going to try to get people online and this. You really didn't care about anything I had to say, did you? No, I was just going to ask you how much do they charge? For, that, for the video. What video? What is this? <laughs> you talking about the minute the airplane company I made some videos. They, made they, some they, minutes. they never got to us. They're free. Ah. I think MACC would want to charge for them. Videos, videos are really difficult to sit down and watch as like an individual. Well, Rotary spends <laughs> there isn't a big dollars on very googling. <laughs> I was going to say that too. Has has anyone said me, me and Carl ever spent a Saturday looking for anything that has to do with wetland delineation on Google or some have, video? And I have I printed some information so I could. It's like my game. where is it? It doesn't exist. The only thing this Boston dot has like this totally boilerplate explanation of a wetland and blah 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 and. But I was even looking for YouTube. But like what about the handbook? Emmy, I was looking for Emmy. It doesn't. It's not. I just think what we, what we talk about here is so much more informational. I mean, all those, all those classes could have been videotaped. Well, like plant identification stuff. Like yeah. when I first 
I never heard of MCC. I don't feel like they do so, many of those. Months I feel ago. Like but I looked they, at the list, and that they, would have been interesting. So I Googled it. They create these they, seminars. There isn't even like a guy walking in the that you woods have an understanding in like Wellesley saying, oh, saying, oh, this is a broadly memorable. Like, I can't. Items, I don't know. Like, I guess I did go to Wetlands. Like, so if they did film these classes, that I would put my earphones on and listen to it. I don't know why they did that. They had, who's the woman that she's the, the, um, Conservation Commissioner for um, Ooh, in fact, I'll, show, I'll show you what I got. And she's also on the MACC board. I don't know. Because um, she had she had one of the things that she did. Um, it was one of the commissions can do to protect. Was Wetlands One Hundred and One? Yeah, it was like one of those things that she did in Ipswich. Yeah. And I and I said to her, I said, you know, um, you know, do you guys ever do anything with those that? Uh, um, you know, you can kind of look at them online. And she said, oh, you know, we have a, a um, they had an audio tape and a slide. So basically you could listen to the lecture and look at the, the, uh, the slide presentation um, that was online. And she, she said, yeah, just give me your email. And she sent it to me. Oh, and then there was someone else that, uh, um, Another thing that was a uh, thing that BSC was doing in Boston, yeah. and I wasn't able to do that, and I contacted the person at BSC that was actually doing that. The woman said, give me your email. I send you my, my whole, uh, my whole um, PowerPoint presentation. She did. I think it's the person at BSC that usually does, maybe it's BSC that usually does the 101. No, yeah. no. The 101 is Greg Hawkmith and somebody. No, it's a woman. Oh, when I had it, it was... Oh, I'm I'm, so after the conference, there's going to be uh, Wetlands Delineation 1. Oh. And that's Greg Hockmith, who works for uh, Williams and Sparagis. He's their lead guy. We met him out on 1260, 1264 uh, Main Street when we delineated that line. So that's that's his group, and he's been doing that for 10 years. Oh. Um, yeah, this is what I found I online. Today. Learn about wetland and be inspired, what to look for. Who's, who's giving the talk? Who, what? Oh, I, go, I was searching, oh. literally trying to find out some fun videos and things to just do. How to do it. Not much information. We could put together a video. Conservation Commission. I make a motion to, well, they're so ridiculous. Put together a video? No. <laughs> Do we have, just before you close, do we have everything? No, 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 no I'm, I'm trying, I'm making a motion to approve the minutes as, as yeah, amended. please. <laughs> I'll second it. Yes, please, now. Approve the minutes as edited? Yes. <laughs> as, yeah. And after this, get the minutes. We have an MHCC out of the way. Out of here. It's snow soon, or it's snowing. Yeah, I, I think it's it's it when finally? I came in. Kind mm -hmm. of just like it was supposed to start at five o'clock. No sign of it coming. Yeah, they said like a couple. They said it started snowing at one o'clock, but it was just so cold and so dry that it just never hit the ground. There's Ooh, three to yeah. five was last I heard. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's supposed to start at five o'clock. Little snow. Nothing up north though. No, one to two inches, if that. Southern New Hampshire. Did somebody second? It's okay, oh, we don't need any more up there. Did you see how you much? You should have seen my my porch roof. Oh my. Oh I I I, I have an idea. I'm like I gotta shovel this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Must have been four feet. Where was this? No. Uh it's in Intervale. Oh. White Mountain. What what yeah, right Washington yeah. Valley. Oh, it is. Yeah. Did you see they recorded the highest winds in like almost two decades? We're oh, at 150. 150. No, 177. Yeah, really? Where is this? It was the sustained in Mount Washington. Washington. Said so it was uh, one, since 1967, I think. Oh, was, that long? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, because the highest wind speed up there is 232 miles an hour. Mm. Which got broken. Yeah. That oh, really? What? Yeah. New Hampshire's claim to fame. Uh, it wasn't in Alaska? Oh, it didn't have broken in Washington. I think so. I thought, it was like, I thought it was Europe. I could Google it really quick, but I thought it was like Europe somewhere. But that was a fast. 230 in one or two. I wasn't the meeting, so I can't. Okay. Good. I have time. Really? No cocaine to me. You get a second? Somebody second? Second. All right, minutes. Taken care of. Anything else?
Any other any other information? I think that uh, no, you're on. Any any update? Do our due diligence to make our the person that was here last time. Any update on the status? Not that it's. Um, yeah. Yeah. What happened? I went. I did drive by there. The restaurant. Oh, restaurant. Um, I was just gonna ask that. <laughs> I did. I went by Patricia. Debagny. Debagny. That was the woman who was. Well, no. What the what the update is is there there is no update. Yeah, but, 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 but if any <laughs> if anything comes up, um, I will contact her. And uh, Michael Palmer hasn't contacted me, so there's there's no update at this moment. So um, waiting to see, but I think. When did we say bye? We, we I think it was April tenth. Yeah, second. 10th. Yeah, April second 10th. No, second meeting in April. Oh, okay. I like to keep it light before tax day because I'm having a stroke. <laughs> Should we um? <laughs> hearing some bad stories. <laughs> come, come our first meeting in March. Maybe after that, if we haven't heard, should we just? Give a little prod of, hey, Mike, how's it coming? You're still on track. Why don't I make a note to call him next week? Yeah. Must wait to March. Oh, you can. Is tomorrow March? Having dinner no. over there. What's the 27th? Tomorrow is the, the last day. Probably is. There, it's hands on, man. Yeah. I keep that on the tracks. I keep it as already March. That's nuts. So are we waiting for his. Um, LSP to come back at us and before we bring up the issue of the, the cut trees, or is that LSP? Sorry. Yeah, we're waiting for his consultant to license site professional. That's for like contamination facilities. Yeah, that's what we're, we're waiting license for. Wetland scientist. Wetland scientist. LSP. License site professional. Right. That's that's for like that's contamination. Only, yeah. That's one if they have hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. um, Right. They need to yeah. consult and yes. then decide what they're going to do and get and get back to me, if anything. But that doesn't get them out of any violation that's happened. Right. So there's that too. Is that is something going to go out to him before? Is this facility? Yeah. What what yeah. what land scientists know? So no, we're, gonna we're just, we're just going to wait for them. Okay. Uh, you know, second meeting of April. Uh, Max asked me to give him a call next week and to see where he's at with that, and I'll I'll I will make that phone call. Get back to the commission. I'm, I'm curious. This is a follow-up. Has there ever been any kind of a note or warning or tug on the coattails for the guy down at the uh, Perfectos where they parked? Has anybody said anything to them? Is it, have they been put on notice about? Are there still more issues? Well, they always park off in that. Car I saw place. snow being plowed on both sides. Actually, yeah. I, did, I went there. I went there for the first time in my life. All the snowstorms they were doing this. <laughs> and I've, I've also still yeah. noticed that they packed. It's very sensitive to getting uh, violations. So. Well, I know. I, I was. I, I what wasn't what happened to the chain that was supposed to be up? Well, don't, if you remember, we allowed them to. Even if they put the ballwoods in and put chains up, we allowed them to be down from November fifteenth yeah. to April fifteenth. He's been allowed to put snow there. So. But people are parking there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and to the left of the dumpster. And, and they're parking four four cars up to the right hand side. So yes. it's a, not just to the, to the right of the dumpster. It's all parked. So in the, yeah. after the snow plowing period is over, we should I, I'll give him a call or yeah. make sure that you know he understands that this can't be. We can't wait for three years for this to happen. <laughs> um, when what was the was it March that we required the gate to go back up? I think you're saying April. I don't recall. April, like 15th. I thought it was April 15th. I thought it was like from November 15th to April 15th that we would allow the chains to be taken down. Okay. I think that's what I recall, I'll just from memory. Hmm? I mean, I drive by, I've just, it's, it's yeah. gone in such a black hole for me. I'm like, I'll start paying attention. Okay. I mean, I just... It's just a force of habit now when I drive down the road just to kind of look over and I kind of go like this. You know, the only reason why I look is because I get my hair cut up. My brother in law is right there and it's like I look across the street and I'm like, oh, look at those cars. Yeah. i make a motion to adjourn. Uh, just one more thing. Oh. Uh, if anyone wants to go to the site walk for Smith Oil on uh, Main Street, it's like 258, something like that. We're going to have a site walk with a consultant to 
you know, generally make sure we get the Which what is this? Correct. Uh, it won't be approved. You guys would approve if anything comes in, but we just want to make them more accurate than it appeared that they were. That's going to be on Tuesday at 12 o'clock. Is that uh, uh, where, where the little White House was? Has that been incorporated into that whole lot now? Yeah. That's, so that's all one now? Yeah. Okay. And if the proposal comes in, they're going to do some, they're going to do some filling. This is in Nika's. Check that. Um, can we? Yeah, I will. And that one will be on the agenda for, for the next meeting. Yeah, it'll be in your packet too. But I'll email. <laughs> this is right next to Kate. Okay. See you on Tuesday, everybody. Basketball. Yeah. Uh, motion to adjourn at nine eleven. Carl Sacconi. We need a quorum. Left. Make the meeting. <laughs> That's right. We've got one. They won't really leave. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.